In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can recognize the text from any image that we input and how we can process that so that we can print that to the console. So for example, I'm going to have this image with some Russian text and it also has some English text. And when we go ahead and run the script, it's going to analyze the image and it's going to print it inside the console. So you can use this to scan PDF files and so on. I also have another image which is called notes, which is this simple note over here. And as you can see, it's a sample. But if we go back to main and we change this to notes PNG and rerun the program, it's going to extract all of the text that it finds inside that note. And it also works with images such as this one. If we go ahead and type in kings.png and run the program, we're going to say, how did this guy take a king down with another king, lol. And this one, it had a bit more trouble to find the text. So as you can see, it took take A and put it together, even though in the text, they are separate. So this program isn't perfect, but if you are scanning PDF files and text files, you should have no problem having accurate results. Otherwise, you're going to have to implement a spell check and then you'll also be able to use this for real life images. And one more note is that I've actually gone ahead and included the source code to this project in the description box down below. And you'll have all of these image files. And what I want you to note is the installation text because for this to actually work, we're going to have to install Tesseract. And on MacBook, this requires that you have Brew installed. So you're going to have to do a quick search on how to install Brew. And then when you have Brew, you can just use this in the terminal directly and it's going to install it on your MacBook. For Windows, you're going to have to go to this link over here and install the Tesseract executable. And also you're going to have to save the path of that executable to a variable such as the Windows path. But we'll be covering that as we create the program. So the very first thing you want to do is create a new empty Python project. And I'm going to be using Python 3.10 for this. And right now we are in main.py and we can close that sidebar because the first thing we want to do is open up the terminal down here and type in pip install py tesseract. And once you have that installed, we should be good. It should take a bit longer. I already have this installed, so that's why it was lightning fast. But once you have that installed, we can actually go ahead and also install Tesseract on our computer. So once again, if you are on MacBook, you need to go ahead and type in brew install Tesseract. And if you want to include all the languages available, go ahead and add the dash language. Otherwise, just type in brew install Tesseract. And it's going to start up brew and it's going to install whatever is required for Tesseract to work. And I already have it installed, so I don't know what it's actually doing. It might be upgrading it. And yeah, it looks like it upgraded it. So that's a good bonus for me. But once you have Tesseract on your MacBook, we can continue with the tutorial. On Windows, you don't have to do this because you're going to provide the path to the executable. So let's go ahead and close the terminal. And then we want to go ahead and import the pillow library. And we want to import the image from this library. Then from PyTesseract, we're going to import PyTesseract and we want to import the enum. Now the enum is just going to make it easier for us to avoid making mistakes when we try to actually extract text. So for example, the first thing we want to create is an OS, which is going to be an enum. And inside here, we're just going to have two types. One is the MacBook and one is going to be Windows. So we can select freely between these two. Then we also want to create a class which will hold the languages so we don't have to manually type them out each time. And it's going to hold an enum again with the English language being set to English, the Russian language being set to Russian and the Italian language being set to Italian. So as you can see, these are the codes. And if you want to include more languages, you're going to have to use these codes. And more of those can be found by just typing on Google, whatever language you want to use. Now let's go ahead and create the real class, which is the image reader. And first we want to go ahead and create an initializer. And the initializer is going to take an OS of type OS. And I actually did this for debugging, of course, because I have a MacBook and it's a lot easier to test out both. If I can just pass in the operating system that I want, and here we're going to go ahead and type in if the OS is equal to 
os.mac, then we're going to perform the following code. And again, we don't have to do anything on Mac, so all I'm going to do is paste in this print statement. Tesseract is already installed via Homebrew, so we will type in that we are now running the program on Mac. If the OS is set to os.windows, then we're going to perform the following. So again, we need the Windows path, and that's going to equal the path to your Windows Tesseract executable. And for a lot of you, it's going to be this path over here. It should be inside your program files, and it's going to be under Tesseract-OCR. And what you want to refer to is the Tesseract executable. So you need this to actually run the program. And on top of that, for Windows, you need to call PyTesseract, and you need to go ahead and say Tesseract command, and you want to set it to your Windows path. So this is only applicable to Windows. And then we can go ahead and print that message that we are now running this on Windows. So that's all we need for the setup. And again, on MacBook, there's not really any setup, but on Windows, you do need to specify the executable path. Now remaining inside the class, we're going to create a function called extract text. And inside here, we want to pass in an image path of type string and a language of the image of type string. And it's going to return to us a string, whatever's contained inside the image. Now we need to open the image, so image.open. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and open the image. Then we want to create a variable called extracted text, which is going to equal the pytesseract.image to string. And we're going to pass in the image with the language being set to the language. And we're going to return the extracted text. Now that's all we're going to include in this class for now. So right below, we can go ahead and create our usual main check. And let's go ahead and test this out on one of the images. So the image reader is going to equal an image reader. And I only can do this on Mac, of course, so os.mac. And we can go ahead and say the text is going to equal image reader extract text, and we need to pass an image string. So I have these ones over here, which are located in my images folder. So to make this work, I need to refer to images and pick one of the images. And for the first one, I'm going to refer to the Russian.png. And the language is going to be set to Russian. Now, if we actually go ahead and print this text, we should get some text from the image. So here it's going to say Eta Uchebnik, and then it's going to say this, which is not Pythonized, as you might recall. In the Russian one, we typed it in English, and that's because we only specified Russian as the recognizable language. And to add more languages that can be recognized, just add a plus and add the language code for that over there. So now if we run this, we'll get Eta Uchebnik Pythonize. But now you might be thinking, why did we go ahead and create this enum over here? And the real reason is because I much prefer to have enums when it comes to being able to select a language or any kind of user options. So language here should actually be of type language. And instead of having Russian and English here, we're going to go ahead and delete this and replace it with language.english. And let's also go ahead and select an English picture, such as the one from the notes. So if we go to main and type in notes instead of that one over there and rerun the program, we're going to get an error because I forgot to type that the language of type language should be the language dot value. And the value is the string, of course. So if we rerun this program, it's going to run everything the same way as it did earlier and this time it's going to print it out line by line. So first we have the date and time, the sample, and dash Pythonize. Although in the preview, I demonstrated that you could have all of this in one line. So what I actually did was create a variable called processed text, and I used the dot join feature. And what we wanted to join was the text dot split. And when we put this inside here, we get all of the text on one single line. Because what this does is join each one of the strings and make sure that there's only a space in between them. So once again, you can insert any image you want in here, and it's going to do its best to extract that text. 
Now you might be wondering, how would you select two languages together if they are enums? Well, the answer is quite simple. All we have to do is go here and add an enum that says English underscore Russian, for example, and then we can just define it here. So if we go ahead and say English plus Russian, we're going to have that available. So now if we go back here and say English Russian, it's going to recognize those languages. And if we go here and say Russian and run the program, we're going to have the output that we had earlier. So that just about covers the basics on how you can recognize text from images in Python. Of course, there's much more to learn and we'll try to cover that in a future lesson. But for getting started, this is more than enough. So have fun, play around with it. And with that being said, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.